Thank you, Angie. Um, I'm very excited, uh, super excited today as we are having this final fireside chat with a dear guest uh, speaker from Russia who flew here just for one day to share his story, unbelievable story from Moscow and coming back tomorrow. And uh, I'm, I'm excited because the fact that, you know, Oleg uh, Tinkov has built uh, probably the most successful digital bank in the world. It's the largest bank with 7 million customers and it's an extremely profitable bank. Uh, but the thing which excites me the most that, you know, Oleg is probably one of the richest people in Russia. He's on the Forbes list. But unlike many, uh, you know, oligarchs and rich people and successful entrepreneurs in Russia, he built his ha fortune. Have, have no belly. <laughs> have no belly. But also he's built his fortune by, uh, from scratch by himself. He started in late 80s, early 90s by selling electronics, importing it from Asia. And then the, the, he built his first capital, which he invested into the uh, chain of electronic shops um, in, in Russia, which he successfully sold. And the money he earned, he invested into the uh, frozen products company. He built a brand about the uh, dumplings, which is a um, very popular dish in Russia, which he successfully sold later. And, and later, he, he launched the beer uh, brand, Tinkoff, which became very popular in Russia. And he later sold it to the largest beer manufacturer in the world, the InBev. And uh, you know, Oleg often is compared with Richard Branson. We call it so-called Russian Richard Branson. And it's symbolic that idea of the Tinkoff bank came to Oleg while he was resting in the Richard Branson uh, island uh, in 2005. And at a time when he announced that he's building a bank, people were really skeptical. No, not many people actually took it serious. And uh, you know, people are saying, come on, you know, you're building a bank. It's not like you know, selling dumplings or beer. And here we are, 13 years later, it's the largest digital bank in the world. So Alec, back in 2005, I would like to ask you this probably, what, what was the reason behind the idea of the white bank? Uh. Well, I don't know. Um, I, I knew it's going to be profitable. And being an entrepreneur, uh, we are all about uh, uh, making money, uh, create the value for customers and uh, for yourself and for the shareholders. And of course, and I, I was looking around what is, a, what is the market in Russia, which is... Um, uh, have a bad service, unpen unpenetrated with uh, uh, sophisticated, cool product, and yet big uh, in, in, in sizes. So that was obviously a credit card business. Again, and living a lot of time in California, um, I, 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 I knew that the credit card is a big, uh, big part of. Uh, daily uh, consumer lives in the developed uh, markets. And when I uh, check r Russian statistics and realize that in Russia there is a, like 0.1 card per credit card per capita back in 2005, I was very excited. Right now we have still 0.7 uh, credit card per capita. So it has grown seven times since then but still huge room to grow because in US there are three credit cards per capita. And so size of the market and um, lucrativeness of the market. Um, that's probably it. In your latest book, uh, which I recommend strongly to everyone to read, it's yet only in Russian. It's called How to Build the Largest Digital Bank in the World. You're saying that uh, Tinkov Bank has changed the banking industry in Russia and in the world. Uh, why do you think so? Um, I'm not so proud to say we changed the industry in the world. There would be a bit of uh, exaggeration, but uh, it definitely we did in Russia. We were the first who introduced a so-called smart courier, courier, because before, before us, people were going to the branches, queuing into the branches and uh, to get their financial services. Uh, and we introduced the model where our courier can come anywhere you are, on the conference, in the office, or in the house. So we've got 
uh, 2,500 courier throughout Russia, and we can deliver our product within 24 hours from application, uh, or uh, or if it's um, uh, if you're already our customers, you do need a QIC, etc. We now can deliver uh, any product within 30 minutes. Um, so we've got. 25,000 meetings a day. It's it's a big machine. We are actually much bigger than DHL uh, in in Russia, etc. Uh, that's obviously um, uh, it's it's obviously um, game changer. Now all the branch banks, uh, our competitors, they start to offer courier delivery for their product, which is a bit for us uh, funny because why would you, do you need to deliver from the branch? It's a really stupid idea, but they, since they copy and think of, they copy it, us in all the way, so they even <laughs> copy <laughs> courier delivery from the branches, which is a bit funny. Uh, but um, yeah, we, we change it and I strongly believe 10 years ago and now that the branch won't exist. Retail banking doesn't require, doesn't need any branch. I think the all branches are, um, this is um, this gone. I mean, we don't need them. Uh, I, when I said that 10 years ago, uh, I think I was in Singapore, and the crowd were laughing when I said, there are no branches will be in, in, in the retail banking. And now it's already nobody laughed, but still half of you don't believe. But believe me, there won't be any branches left just to me, five years from now, because all you can do in the phone, you, your branch is your smartphone. You, you, you don't need to do anything in the branch. There's nothing to do. All branches will be become Starbucks. And that's, we, we expect to see much more Starbucks now, because the, the, the banks will be shut down, and new coffee shops will be open in, in their locations. It's interesting. Talking about the branches and the traditional banks, I'm wondering what do you think uh, about the latest moves of the large banks uh, going into you know, online, building their own online digital banks. Do you think they will succeed in that? Uh, it's, a, it's a tough question. You know. um, they will and, um, and not, because they will definitely improve, and they're already doing so. Uh, all the big banks they have, uh, good internet bank, good mobile application, sort to say, and kind of, uh, yeah, they are, but they still would be never um, uh, convincing enough or attractive for the younger generation. Because we know, we know this uh, generation gap, right? And, and the kids, they don't want to be like your dad, and nobody want to go to the same bank that, you, that your parents are going. And uh, we see the that's what we see with Tinkoff. We, we targeting much younger people. Our uh, customers average like 24 for some product, for credit product, 37. There's a younger crowd, which gives us hope that we will be even bigger uh, five, 10 years from now. We are 7 million clients, and we aim to be 20 million clients uh, four years from now. Because we have younger crowd, and we're growing with them. And um, there's these big banks. Uh, they're trying to play with uh, uh, digital services, etc., but they're still so rigid. They have so much legacy. It's very difficult for them to change, and mostly because it's extremely difficult for them to, um, to uh, uh, bring talents, uh, young, uh, smart engineers, developers, uh, any kind of IT and marketing people, because it's not only not cool for uh, our kids to go to big banks uh, to be served. It's also not cool for younger generation and smart people to work for the bank, for the big bank. They don't want to work for Citibank, right? They want to work for Tinkoff Bank, or they want to work for Google. They want to work for Facebook. That's the reality. And um, that's why, so they're, they're sort of uh, having in this food chain, in this talent, on talent uh, pool, they have like a long tail of the talents, so they're getting worse people to work for them, you know? 
And that's why and now with new product, with new, for example, we were the first bank in the world who introduced in our mobile application stories. Of course, Snapchat was in, has invented it, then been copied by uh, uh, Instagram. Instagram. But we were the first bank. Imagine the big bank doing it. It's impossible. Of course, we have young, talented, uh, creative people. Obviously, as you can see, there is no dress code, etc., in our organization. So it's a different atmosphere. It's a different environment where we are pretty much American company. You can invent what you want. You can, you can introduce what you want. You can do what you want, but be responsible for what you're doing. This kind of atmosphere cannot be created at a big bank. So they'll, by, by the time they will clear through all these committees and legal department these stories, the story was already like out of fashion, right? That's, that's where they have challenge. Of course, they will, they, they will improve their um, um, web uh, applications and mobile applications, which are sucks now, but uh, eventually uh, it will be extremely difficult for them to compete for younger generation. I'm talking retail. Of course, they stay with corporate business, investment business, wealth management, etc. But it will be very difficult for them to keep up with a uh, new innovative uh, fintech, if you wish. I hate that word anyway, startups. Uh, talking about the young generation, and um, one of the problems that all fintechs and, and actually banks are facing is that the lack of talents especially when they want to scale faster. And you have an average age of employees in, at Tinkoff is 24 years old. And uh, how do you overcome this challenge? And is it true that you don't hire people who worked in the bank before? Uh, we try not to. And uh, because they have broken mind, right? And I try not to hire, hire uh, those people. Maybe some of them still, you know, sneeze through, but I don't know. Uh, uh, but I, d I try not to, and I also don't try to hire people who wear ties, etc. Because I think um, uh, the times have changed now. Is now is is not about about how you look. It's about how you think. It's about how you deliver, and uh, it's a different world. And for the for those big organizations and big banks, it's very challenging times are coming. If they don't understand that, I feel sorry for them. Because these credit committees and all these sort of committees and the meetings are already passed. And if they want to compete with a new generation, they've got to change or they've got to leave. Uh, you mentioned that you hate the word fintech, and you often criticize fintechs. Uh, you're saying that they have lack of business model. You don't believe in the model of net banks. In, in your book, you're saying, I don't believe in fintech startups. They are not killing banks, but making them stronger by bringing them fresh ideas. Fintech startups just triggered banks to change. Why do you think so? Um, yeah, it's true, because um, you know, some of them will survive. Some of them uh, will do something like new bank probably in Brazil that's it's could survive because good market, big market, and there's no competition, and they're doing right things um, uh, some I like some other maybe startups, but most of them in general um I don't see how they survive because unfortunately i I, I would expect from uh fintech that they come up with real uh, new innovations such as uh, biometric, uh, like voice, or artificial, uh, in, uh, uh, artificial intelligence, et cetera, et cetera, or something uh, like um, new uh, tools of uh, servicing uh, clients like voice um, uh, assistance, you know, this, th that's what I'm actually expecting from new startups that challenge us now. Now we are in the middle. You've got like big banks, Tinkoff here. We are sort of in the middle. And then new startup fintechs. We, we want them to challenge us and show us the new technology. Then we would acquire them or maybe copy them. But what we see in reality, we only see that they are really doing uh, arbitrage on the... Um, on the regulation and arbitrage on the, or, 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 on the underwriting policies or uh, compliance. 
That's what they really do. Uh, and the, the other half is just eliminating the fee. If you eliminate the fee, there is no business model. It's easy to eliminate the fee, but where is your business? It's like, oh, we are big, we are, we are new fintech, we have no fees. I'm like, today I talked to one of the bank backstage here, it's a big now, famous, like always on the conference, you know this bank, obviously. And she said like, we don't screw the customers. I said, sure, you screw the investors. Like, uh, because the investors are paying for it, right? You, you have a fee-free, uh, zero commission or zero whatever to your customers, and then you burn the money, and the investors are filling in the money. I mean, I don't know what is better, to screw customers or screw your investors. Otherwise, it's become a pyramid, right? The other investor invests, the other invests, the other make bigger and bigger valuation, and then you end up with like, some of these startups are now valued more than us. We are a $3 billion company on London Stock Exchange, and you see some startups that never been profitable, never earned a penny worth $4 billion, $3 billion. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I don't believe in this world. Uh, we are making almost half a billion dollar net income. And we, we worth three billion. Of course, there is macro, there is a geo, there is a Russia. But still, guys, come on. We are seven PE business. And those people, they don't even have E. Uh, talking about the challenger banks, uh, in your book, you, you mentioned that a couple of years you wanted to buy actually one challenger bank. And you went to UK and then met a, a couple of founders. Of, you mentioned Monzo and Tandem. Uh, why didn't it happen? Hmm. Um, it's, that's what I said. We met with all the usual suspects, you know, all of them. them. In the UK, it's closer. It's only three hours flight, right? We've we flown there, and I met all the founders. And I find that they all want to change the world. They, wanna, they all want to be next Facebook. And they're super cool, but again, they don't have a business model. They don't know how. But of course, they want to change the world. And when I was stupid enough even to offer uh, them some investments based on my own sort of understanding and uh, being, like you just said, in four different businesses and making money from the scratch. I born in Siberia, tiny city, just 300 kilometers from China border. And I have a quite harsh life and I, I work in the mine for one year, etc. cetera. I, I know the cost of the money, the value of the money. I offer them some money, they laugh at my face, they say, you're crazy, we're worth like 100 million pounds, 50 million, whatever the number they create. I just cannot even explain to myself how can I pay that kind of money to them. So I obviously never ever even try to, and we are not investors anyway. The idea was to acquire them and maybe uh, start think of a business in UK. Uh, it been provoked by my kids uh, living there. My daughter, she was uh, studied in London College, and my son, my two sons, they were in Oxford School. So I was, it was kind of emotional. Probably I want to show to my kids that okay, your dad is here, that your brand. Think of Brent is out there. It was nothing rational. Then when we calculate it rationally, we just forget this idea. And thank, thanks God, I never invest into that crap. Um, another question, uh, cryptocurrencies, a hot topic uh, nowadays. You mentioned in one of the interviews, you compared cryptocurrency with Pokemons. Uh, people will use it as a toy and it's temporary thing and then you know, throw it away afterwards. Um, Pokemons maybe, but it's, it's more, I see um, uh, cryptocurrency now attract more sort of, uh, um, how do we call them, uh, um, sort of gray economy uh, and say, um, uh, g uh, I, I, I cannot use the stronger words, but l l let's say weird people and special people. I, I don't see um, uh, why what, why would, why don't, why it's not enough just to pay uh, 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 normal money? Do we have any problem with transferring money? No. Do we have any problem for paying for your utilities, bills, restaurant, hotels, etc.? No. So why do we need the cryptocurrency? Maybe we need it more to again to to do uh, to uh, make some criminal activities. I don't know. Maybe it's. 
to buy drugs or uh, uh, missiles or it could be for used for embargo, I don't know, to buy uh, from Iran oil or whatever. I, I, I don't see the real big reason to, for cryptocurrency to exist. To me, the, this could fuel gray economy, this could fuel crime, uh, etc. Because uh, to me, right now, everybody who is like involved in this cryptocurrency sh should be really investigated by local authorities. Because the first question would be, why do it, are they doing that? What for, right? I mean, that's, that's what my view on cryptocurrency. And I, I don't believe that local central bank uh, will uh, allow them to uh, grow because n not, not a single currency, that not a single sovereign state would allow it for them to be a center of emission. Because what is the country? Is a borders, as a passport, as an emission? Uh, center, right? They cannot give the emission to some, I don't know, smart uh, hooligans or I don't know, a, a new IT people such as Pavel Durov or whatever. They, they don't want to do. They want to give it to them that power because they they want to. Uh, the local central banks they, they want to they, they want to control this business. I I I don't believe it's really happened on the huge scale because the politicians. Uh, especially Americans, they would never allow it so. Because they allow it yet when it's a small uh, scale, when it starts to be big, I, I, I don't think uh, it will survive. Because the last thing that Americans want to lose is the control over the world uh, via US dollar, right? If there is a cryptocurrency, how do they control the world? How they sanction Chinese for buying Russian missile, right? <laughs> Um, going because back Chinese can pay us a uh, cryptocurrency. <laughs> Some believe or Indians. Someone believed that uh, it's, uh, currency, cryptocurrency was invented in 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 in, uh, in, in Kremlin. Yeah. Obviously, <laughs> 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 to sell S four hundred to India, right? Uh, going back to Hong Kong, and uh, we had today on the stage uh, CEO of N Financial speaking as executives from Tencent. Uh, it's not a big secret that um, both, you know, BAT uh, moving outside of China and scaling across the world with the in financial services business. And, and uh, recently, uh, I think Alibaba and, and Financial announced their plans to expansion in Russia. Does, is it bothering you? Are you concerned? Do you feel it's going to be a challenge to compete with them? Not at all. Because I think their niche is to serve uh, uh, the board trading. Because uh, like like people that buy AliExpress, etc. By the way, we 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 partnered with AliExpress. Now credit card uh, AliExpress is, is issued by Tinkoff Bank. We are their partner there, so our um, customers uh, can buy at AliExpress a special cashback, whatever. Um, I mean, they will serve mostly a trading between Russia and China, which is a niche. And they will obviously serve or try to serve Chinese tourists that are coming to Russia, Moscow, St. Petersburg, uh, which is also niche. It's a niche product. They don't have a brand. Uh, they don't have, uh, I would say, even technology to compete at large in Russia because Russia is very competitive landscape. Russia is not. Uh, some other Asian country or small country. We've got Visa, we've got MasterCard, we've got American Express, Sberbank is huge, Alpha Bank, Tinkoff. is is not an easy in environment. And uh, there, there is a huge competition. And they can, but they have to invest heavily. It's not like they come and just invest, I don't know, $100 million and they succeed. If they really consider to conquer Russia, they have, to, they have to invest a lot of money. It's a billions and billions of US dollars. Otherwise, or they have to buy someone, or they have to invest billions into the brand and distribution, etc. Just coming to Russia and saying, hey, we are big in China. We have zillion installations, or like 10 cents. We have 1 billion we pay accounts. So what? It doesn't matter for Russia, right? And like you, are, you have zero here. I, I don't think it will be easy for both Tencent and Alibaba to conquer Russian financial market. Uh, talking, continuing this topic, Tencent has announced recently uh, investment in a new bank in Brazil. 
Have you ever received any offers coming from Chinese tech fin players to acquire? Uh, not really. Uh, they're coming to us. We start to see them more and more often, both of these guys and some others. But they always keep, always keep talking about partnership. They say, well, let's do partnership. Uh, and my answer always is like, so guys, if I fly to Shenzhen now or to Shanghai and I offer you partnership in China, what would you say to me? It's like, let's do partnership in China. <laughs> <laughs> so same thing, right? <laughs> they come to me, oh, we are big, we have million clients, let's do partnership in Russia. I say like, let's do partnership with WeBank in, in China. It's a good idea, no? Uh, what do you think about WeBank? Partnership anyway? doesn't work. They've got to pay a lot of money. One of the questions uh, is uh, that, uh, coming from the crowd, what competitive advantage you, you think you have towards WeBank? Uh, but WeBank has a lot of competitive advantages itself. It, it's a very nice model. Actually, we are quite um, excited of what they're doing, and we pay... is. is uh, and WeChat is is really uh, a world's uh, kind of uh, uh, wor world class in innovation, because it's not um, not WhatsApp, but WeChat has invented uh, this kind of ecosystem where you can do anything you want, including financial services and payments. That's very that's very unique and, and it's very uh, cool. And we respect a lot what uh, WePay and Alipay are doing in China, in China. Okay, that's very important to say, in China. Uh, we, d we don't believe it will be for them easy ride uh, in uh, any other country. So India already proven that it w it's not easy for them to go else. I, I don't know, maybe they are succeed in small Asian countries around China, but in, and like in Europe, it will be difficult for them in US or Russia. Um, uh, what competitive advantage? I think we have better uh, personnel. I have to mention that we have very cool people working for us. Because don't forget, Google has lost, I mean, h has won everywhere, but lost in Russia. Yandex is bigger than, you, than Google. It gives you an idea about Russian engineers I, I, I talked about earlier on this stage here today. And, uh, and about Russian developers and IT people and quality of those uh, mathematicians and physicians. Because based on the military and space complex, Soviet complex from Soviet Union, we have so many universities, so many good, uh, good teachers and mathematician talent working. So we have big pool of talent to choose from and we choose the best. We fight and basically with Google, Yandex, Mail, and the Silicon Valley, right? We have Silicon Valley and we have Moscow now, that where the best IT people are working. I'm sure here in Hong Kong, if you go in any, any big companies, so in WeBank too, I know, and, and Shenzhen, they, they're working Russian IT people and engineers. So that's our competitive advantage that we have so many smart, young, uh, motivated, and, and sophisticated people. Uh, because all the products that's coming out uh, of Tinkoff, we will we launched this year like five six products, and uh, most of them are very successful and growing like crazy. Again, we are opening half million uh, accounts per month, new accounts, and uh, it's done by our people. It's not done by me. It's uh, our top management. It's a people that we recruit, and that's where Shenzhen has a uh, limitation. Because there is no five uh, cyber or uh, computer science universities around Shenzhen. Well, Shenzhen considers it as the uh, Silicon Valley of uh, China. It's uh, the, probably the biggest population of the developers uh, in Shenzhen at the moment, in China, probably. One of the most uh, uh, advanced regions. Uh, OK, let, 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 let's believe in it. Okay. okay. All right, we have a question from uh, uh, the person nicknamed Vlad Putin. Uh, <laughs> which product do you dream think of customers using in 2020? Uh, which product? Um, our mobile application. I believe that if our mobile application is not opened uh, 10 times a day, if it's not on the first screen of the phone, we are out of business. Now, to, to be in the financial business, to be in the business, you have to be in the consumer mind. You have to be on the first screen. That's what our fight. Our fight is to be on the first screen of smartphone and, the, and to be open 
at least 10 times a day. That, that's, that's how we see 2020. We want to have 20 million clients. We want to have $1 billion net income. And we want our customers open up our application 10, 10 times or so per day. You mentioned previously in your talk uh, earlier today uh, a concept of lifestyle banking that you are moving into uh, at this moment. Could you tell us more about what, 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 is, what is it? Are you going to compete with Netflix, uh, Facebook? What are um, you trying to create? No, we, we are definitely not going to compete with them. They probably will try to compete with us at some point. Mm. And they probably should uh, because they have so much capital and, and the data and they know their customers. And, um, but uh, as I said, I just said, we, we want people to open application. For the most of the big banks now, people open a mobile application only to pay the utilities or to do some necessary payments or maybe check your balance, etc. We want the people open application to book your hotel, restaurant, table at the restaurant, buy the tickets, cinema, do all the conventional, all, all the lifestyle activities and not only pay uh, the things they have to pay, but also pay the things that we have pleasure of. Uh, 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 of paying and again travel ticket we, we have our own travel insurance uh, tra travel agency we have our insurance company so a a a a anything they need and uh, they have to have Im Im imagine now you have to buy a ticket you have to pull out your passport and, and fill the all the passport details but we bank we already know that it would be easier to do it two clicks pam pam i don't know fly to hong, uh, hong kong one ticket, and because we know all of your information, the, your ticket will el electronic ticket already there, so you don't, ha you don't have to fulfill a any lines your, with your last name or first name or passport details, etc. We believe that banks uh, uh, have a lot of uh, consumer data, and we can use this data uh, simultaneously to provide better customer experience or better customer journey uh, uh, in inside of our Tinkoff mobile application. I think we are running out of time, and uh, I would like to ask one question. You, you're building an extremely successful venture, and uh, you. are you in the previous, all the previous ventures you, s you also successfully sold? Are you considering to sell Tinkoff at some point? Uh, I think we are uh, uh, too expensive right now. Now we've got to build a big company. I, I think we already missed the point where we could be bought. Now we have. 3 billion, 4 billion, we were 4 billion just a couple of months ago, uh, and I'm sure we will be. And uh, um, uh, uh, we are just too big uh, to be bought. Now we have to consider ourselves to buy someone. There's not much to buy. We, we are now getting bigger and bigger, and we, we cannot be bought. And, but you never know. Actually, you know, you know it's my fifth business. And it's, it's always cool for me to buy and sell, to buy and sell. I, I would I, I'm still young, I'm still 15, so I maybe, I, I feel that I could do something else. If someone comes and gives me like big offer I cannot regret, maybe I would consider it. But normally I, I don't believe that there is, there, there is a buyer. And that's why we relaxed about that, and we just keep building the company. I'm so much excited what we do. Every morning, I, I go to my office with a pleasure. And uh, it, it's not that I have to go. I, I, I don't have to go because I have our nice team CEO, Oliver Hughes. All the, all the team is there, so I don't have to come. But I'm coming because I'm so excited, uh, and uh, I, I like what we're doing. And um, we are not on sale. And... Uh, I don't know. Actually, yesterday I bought uh, shares myself for 30 million. Tomorrow is going to be disclosed on Bloomberg. So uh, now I believe it's a cheap, we, uh, nice public public information. I bought uh, uh, yesterday because it was a closed period. Closed period started today. So I keep buying my shares actually back from the market. So uh, I, I like the company and I'm so excited. And I believe we build, if not. Of course, we not the best, but one of the best digital bank in the world, which not really bank, that's something beyond. It's a nice ecosystem, it's a nice group of, uh, group of people. And what I see now, because uh, the recent, yesterday I was in the office and I've been listening to uh, the uh, l latest report, what we're doing on the artificial intelligence, this voice, um, 
uh, voice assistants and biometric is very exciting. I think we really start to bear fruit. I mean, think of and uh, three, four years from now, it will be big company, successful company, and profitable company in contracts to all of the fintechs. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.